When you think of Staples, you more than likely think of the Office Supply Superstore or that viral rebranding video they posted a couple of years ago. But apparently there's a single Staples store here in Hyannis, Massachusetts that carries the latest and greatest PC technologies. So today we're gonna see if this legend is true and if we can build a PC inside of Staples. Come on. From the outside, this looks exactly the same as every other Staples <laughs> store, but that all changes as soon as we step inside. You might expect to see aisles of paper and printers, but instead we're immediately oh. met with gaming chairs, PC desk setups, racing rigs, even high-end CPUs and GPUs. This is legitimately a custom PC shop filled with Intel, Nvidia, Asus, Samsung, Corsair, PNY, and you name it. All of a sudden, calling it just an office supply store doesn't capture the full picture, which I suppose is fitting because Staples' new tagline is the working, learning, and playing store. How about this? If we are able to build an entire PC with what we have in store, I'll give the computer away to one of you watching this video. Sound like a plan? It turns out that this specific store in Hyannis is Staples Innovation Hub, where they test out a bunch of fresh ideas before rolling out to all of the other Staples across the country. Like, for example, this open floor design with laptops front and center as soon as you walk in has apparently rolled out to hundreds of stores already. Now, as of recording this video, all these PC components on display are still in the testing phase and are limited to this specific stable store, making the next part of our challenge today even more exclusive. Whoever wins the PC that we're about to build can proudly say that their computer was one of the first ever PCs built inside of a Staples. We'll kick things off with the largest case that Staples currently carries, the ROG Hyperion. So big, in fact, that it's listed on Zillow as a four bed, two bath, fully furnished vacation home lots of space. This thing can fit any GPU in existence and up to an EATX motherboard. Plus, at a whopping 50 pounds, this case could legitimately replace your dumbbell weights inside of your home gym. This case yeah. has a secret compartment. That's actually pretty useful. I wish more cases had little compartments like this. For the heart of our stables build, let's go with a classic Intel setup, an i7-13700K paired with an Asus Prime B760 motherboard. It's certainly no EATX motherboard that'll fully fill out our case, but that just means we'll have extra space for cooling and airflow. Now, one of my favorite Easter eggs of all time is when Intel designed to the back of their stickers to be a holographic representation of their CPU architecture. And even though I know they discontinued this really cool Easter egg, I would still find myself needing to check the back of every single Intel sticker I get my hands on just to make sure. And ah, yep, it's still not there. One of these days, they're gonna bring it back. I can feel it. <laughs> Brushing my disappointment aside, we'll line up the golden corner of our CPU with our socket and secure it down nice and snug. The 13700K is more than powerful enough to warrant an upgrade over a basic air cooler. And conveniently, the store here actually happens to have multiple AIOs to pick from. I don't know about you, but I actually find installing AIOs to be one of the more intimidating parts of building a custom PC, since out of the box, you actually end up with all of these different backplates for different motherboards and potentially different sets of screws for each variation. I pretty much always find myself reading the manual at this step, and in this case, since we have an LGA 1700 socket, our backplate here needs to be ever so slightly adjusted for the knobs to fit in the exposed Momo holes. And now that we use our base screws to help secure it down, we can break out the random access memory. While these Intel LGA 1700 CPUs are technically compatible with both DDR4 and DDR5 memory, the type that you'll have to use in your computer is contingent on your motherboard. And so our Asus Prime B760 only has slots for DDR4 sticks, which tells us to grab some DDR4 RAM for this build. And in case you're ever worried about accidentally installing the wrong type of RAM in your PC, these little notches here on the bottom of each stick will only allow for the correct generation of RAM to fit inside of your motherboard. A pretty clever hardware design that safeguards you from making that mistake. With those clicked into place, next up we need some storage. And since Staples here has some top of the line Samsung SSDs, we'll go ahead and grab one of those and install it into one of the two open M.2 slots on our motherboard. Now, it's not super common for SSDs to get overwhelmingly hot, but I have noticed that more and more motherboards tend to include an SSD heatsink like this one here, which when flipped over does include a thermal pad that helps pull heat away from the drive to more efficiently dissipate it. In extreme cases, I've actually seen some builds that have a custom water cooling loop that includes the SSD, which is hilarious and way more cooling than you'll ever need for your little drive. And with that, we're ready for step number three, installing our motherboard into our case. It's really easy to forget to install the IO shield here, so we'll be sure to slap that down before screwing in our motherboard itself. 
And moving on to step four, let's add our power supply to the mix. This case again has a bit of a unique way to install the PSU. It even comes with this little window, which would be perfect if we had one of those power supplies that has a screen on the side to help monitor wattages and voltage. We'll stay basic though, because this Corsair power supply is more than enough without the screen. Now you'll notice that we can't slide the power supply in from the back like most cases. So instead, we're actually going to have to remove these shields here in the middle in order to place the power supply below them. There are a few hidden screws here and there that need to be removed in order to make this all work, but overall it is pretty neat and allows for our PCIe power cable to actually come up directly underneath our GPU, which is pretty cool. But before we cable manage everything, it's a good time to install the rest of our CPU cooler. Since we know we'll be putting the radiator at the top of our case, we can get started by adding two fans in exhaust orientation so that they blow hot air up and out of our setup. Here we can also be conscious of where the cables are exiting the fans to make sure that those are pointed towards the back of our case for an easier time cable managing, which we can now plug into their respective controller hub ports in the back. And finally, we can tuck in our CPU with our AIO's heatsink that does come with some pre-applied thermal paste. Although if we wanted to, we could have opted for some standalone paste right here in the store as well. After cleaning things up and doing just a bit of cable management, we actually end up running into some unexpected issues with step number five, installing our GPU. While Staples here does in fact carry the literal top of the line graphics card, the RTX 4090 in store, and today I opted for the RTX 4070 to pair with our 13700K. And when attempting to install it, my Strutra driver was just barely too short to fully access the PCIe slot screws. Thankfully, one of the Staples PC building technicians did have a longer screwdriver on them, but even still, it wasn't the simplest task to access these screws. Most cases have pretty open access to these PCIe screws along the back of the case, but I guess for an aesthetic design choice in this Hyperion case, you kind of have to weave through multiple holes and openings to access them. And while I was eventually able to figure it out with a bit of help, I definitely recommend using a magnetic tip screwdriver if you ever end up building in this specific case. But regardless, just like that, our GPU is installed, meaning that it's now time for the moment of truth. Does our Staples PC actually turn on? We'll plug everything in, press the power button, and see that? Oh, whoops, forgot to turn on the power supply. Classic. At take two, trying again, we see that the PC does spin to life, and after a moment, it posts to the monitor as well. Let's go. And seeing BIOS for the first time after building a PC is literally one of the best feelings in the world. And since we were successful, I will in fact be giving away this PC to one of you watching. To be considered for this Staples PC giveaway, you can check out the top link in the description down below. Low, and one week from today, I'll announce the winner down in the comments. And I suppose to make things even a bit easier, I'll go ahead and install Windows on this PC as well. Funny enough, this was the first time in a long while that I've used a physical Windows activation thing. And when I opened it up, I could not find the USB stick anywhere. But turns out I just didn't look hard enough. <laughs> but yeah, this entire PC with an Intel i7 13700K, an RTX 4070, and Windows included, could be your next build. And so best of luck. And I'm honestly curious what you all think of Staples' new venture into showcasing this more modern technology and potentially even having custom PC gaming components in all of their stores. If they did end up selling PC components, it'd be a really convenient place for a lot of people to go to. Personally, I think it's a pretty neat repositioning away from just selling office supplies, and the fact that they would be able to sell not just PC components, but also monitors, desks, and even gaming chairs means that you could hypothetically walk into a Staples store empty-handed and then walk out with an entire PC gaming setup ready to go. And if you watched my previous video about comparing which big box stores you could realistically achieve that same feat at, then you know just how common it really is. On top of all that, this Staples is also experimenting with a handful of bespoke PC services, such as an in-store assembly option, PC troubleshooting from their expert staff, as well as a 10% discount on all components if you pick out an entire PC's worth from the Hyannis store. That's 10% off an entire PC if you just build it in-store. During the course of my visit, I got to personally meet the staff responsible for these assembly and servicing offerings, and let me tell you, your PC would be in excellent hands. These guys have decades of custom PC building experience, and it's shows. So I mean, who knows, maybe you'll build your next PC at Staples of all places. With that, it's time for me to catch my sketchy flight back home. So thank you for joining me on this Staples PC building challenge. Best of luck in the PC giveaway. Again, you can check out that link down below and a big thank you to Staples and Intel for sponsoring this video. As always, I'm Mr. Easter, your tech tinkerer, and I'll catch you in the next one. That was by far the coolest Staples that I've ever been in. <laughs>